started collecting in 1971 when I was seven. And uh, my main source of card acquisition was through the cashing in of pop bottles. When, when Jake came along or whatever, when he started getting older, um, you know, he expressed some degree of interest in it. I had him take a few trips to the National with me, um, which was really exciting, you know, getting photos with Cal Ripken and things like that. I, I remember we would go up to Planet Collectibles, which again was so surreal for us. We, we ended up taking over that store in order to create Hit Seekers where we sit now. But going up to that shop as a kid, I remember Drew, one of our one of our partners uh, and buddy of mine growing up, we'd be buying against the same things. And it, you know, it was always like, I don't know why, but absolute memorabilia when they used to do the sweet spot signatures where the card was, was an actual sweet spot of a baseball autograph. I just remember that being such a, an incredible experience. Although many people think that, that he and I are like, we're actually, we're very different. <laughs> and um, and we, have, we have a much, much different way about thinking about things. Um, but it, it, it can also be, it can also be extremely rewarding um, to work with, within a family. And I was, real, I was really pleased when, you know, when the, the opportunity came also for, for my youngest son to be able to come in here and really lay his skills down against this building, all this furniture and everything like that. But uh, uh, family business, business isn't easy um, because there is a, you have a very difficult time separating business from family. So, you know, when, when Sunday dinner looks like a board meeting, not as enjoyable as it should be for the rest of the family, honestly. Uh, we, we try to be cognizant of that, but um, I mean, we're, we're doing better. Braxton is 120 hour a week, seven days a week. You wake up thinking about it, you go to bed thinking about it. How do you grow? How do you do all that? And, and we were on a rocket ship and then the entire world stopped. And you know, March 17th, it was St. Patrick's Day two years ago where I remember that being our last event, wondering if we should even have this event because there was not really clear guidance. You start to think, you know, from there, you, you, you do everything you can to keep what you've built over the past seven years. Brax will be eight years old in March in a few weeks. And so the idea that it could all be gone because of a global event was scary. And it, it, it made me go home at nights and just be like, man, I, I need to be thinking about something else. I'm gonna burn myself out. So I, I start watching these breaks and, and begin to see some common threads and things that, you know, as I'm thinking about it, what do I enjoy as a consumer and what, what do I really wish would be a little better? We sat down one night and I, I looked at him and I said, I, I think we can do this and I think we can be different by achieving three things. And I laid it out in a PowerPoint because I just, I live in PowerPoint, it's just who I am. But, but I laid it out and I said, I said, number one, I think just being professional. There's a lot of breakers out there that are not thinking about this from a business perspective. It's, you know, when I have time, I'm going to go online and try to sell something. Um, and, and I think that consistency that you want to see out of a business and building that trust is really important. Number two was product mix, being able to create uh, unique breaks and trying to get your hands on whatever products you can really get uh, and make it really intentional. And so that was the other one. And then the last one was the big one. And that's frankly where my dad and even my mom came in to really change the game for us, and that's shipping. Um, you know, just the ability to ship cards the way that you want to receive them. And we told ourselves, if we can achieve these three things, we can be different. And I think that's what's really allowed us to create what we have today. I got really lucky when it came to Loop in particular. Um, there's, there's an individual who sits on our board at Braxton Brewing Company that was also one of the early investors in Loop. And he had heard that I had just, you know, mentioned in a post a board meeting, it was like, hey, I'm kind of interested in sports cards. I'm having fun with it. And, you know, we're doing this little thing on nights and weekends. It's kind of interesting. And he goes, oh, well, you should talk to Eric and, and have a look at this app. And at the time we were Facebook case breaking and, you know, we were pretty committed that that's the business route that we wanted to go. We want to do full case breaks, scheduled time, et cetera, et cetera. And then I talked to Eric about just kind of the vision of the platform and what Loop could mean for building community moving product, but then being able to do things outside of just moving a product. And we, we definitely wanted to get started with it. And it was clear that we would come to a fork in the road. And we, we did right around the time, um, it was a little bit before, I think before Craig started, that we looked at each other and said, 
we, we kind of need to go all in on this. And, and it showed because we were learning a lot. I mean, there's probably 50,000 case breakers on Facebook and really hard to differentiate short of how much you're spending on advertising or consumer acquisition. And you look at Loop and it's like, we could be really unique and different on the platform and sound different by scaling and hiring personalities that bring a unique set of knowledge into a different product point, but still follow what we believe is the hit seekers way, if you will, on those three tenants that we started. It's, but we, we basically went all in on Loop and, and that right there was the time that we knew that the vision of creating a store was gonna be so necessary because we wanted to blend online and offline together and we wanted to be able to take the community a step forward and you can't really do that without a physical space. Plus at the same time, we're shipping 500 to 600 packages a week and uh, Lord knows my mother would like to get that out of her house. <laughs> to me, Loop, the community, the ability to, to grow, the ability to, to be online, like it, it, we, we talk about this a lot and, and I came from a tech background before starting Braxton. To me, tech is interesting and being online, and, and this is a digital business. This is a card shop for sure, but Loop is, is, is live commerce. It is, to the extent that you can be online, have a community with you, it creates interesting content that people wanna watch and then they wanna participate in it. And as long as you keep that trust alive and keep it interesting, you'll continue to grow and the growth is limitless. And that to me is what's so interesting. Like the shop is great. We're gonna make great connections with people locally, but already we've seen a lot of the people come into the shop, learn about Loop and jump in and be like, oh man, this is so much better. Because they're like, oh, I can pick up my cards locally. We haven't quite figured that out yet. But, but like the ability to drive that human connection is only gonna make Loop better. So for us, I mean, without a doubt, we wouldn't be standing here without the app. This is what I wanna do, right? I, I, want, I want this to be my, last job, right? Um, five years ahead, if, if I just had to just pull it out of the air and tell you what it looked like five years out of the head, uh, ahead, um, there'd be more than one of these. That, that's what I would see.